Hey, my name is Simon Pisley and I'm with the 11 o'clock, <laughs> 11 o'clock comics, 11 o'clock comics. No idea who these guys are, not a clue. But, uh, you know, so maybe uh, you'll see me around. Uh, best enough for Doom Lobo and uh, Slain and Judge Dredd. So, yeah, we'll maybe uh, we get together and have a chat and see what's going on. This is the part where you talk. Oh. Yes. Ah, yes. You see how this works. It's our first radio. The mechanics. Is this thing on? <laughs> click, click, <laughs> click, click. Can you tap, can, tap, tap? Can you hear me now? Like, LAL. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. I want to break it down, break it down. How do I top that? Can't. Mic drop. Yep. Pe- peace out. Peace hey, out. Peace out. Down. Yes. Hey everybody, it's the world famous 11 o'clock comics. I like this new thing you threw on the world. Isn't thing. it great? I think it's wonderful because we are world famous. This is episode 934, same as it ever was, and I am Vince B. Who you are, Vince B. I am David A. Price. That's true, and I, of course, am Magica Dispel. Yes. You are nowhere near as sexy as Magica Dispel. I think it's I'm sexier, actually. Not, okay. no. Mm, I, I, no, okay, whatever. Let's pretend you are <laughs> Magica Dispel, everybody. And uh, lest us not forget, who puts the words in your? Who makes the words audible for the people who listen? Who does it? Cheapgraphicnovels.com. Cheapgraphicnovels.com is the place that you want to head to immediately if you want to save money on OGNs, trade paperbacks, manga, and omnibus editions, among other things. Massive, massive savings. And you could take that savings and buy more book. It's how it works. I have to place an order because, unfortunately, I'm not missing one volume of Berserk. I'm missing two. Wow. Yeah. So I go 1 to 11 and then 14. So I got to get get 12 and 13. And I immediately... What happened? I'm stupid. And I immediately thought, well, I guess I got to go where the prices are super low. CheapGraphicNovels.com because Max can hook me up. CheapGraphicNovels.com. We love them. And him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, it's going to be another episode of What's Tap Drinking because I finished what I had and I have no more. Damn. Yeah. Damn. That's tough. I know. It's rough. Wow. Yep. All, so, that, all that weekend and you couldn't get more. Well, I, I didn't bring enough to the recording studio with me. Oh, okay. Good. Yes, and I don't want to say, oh, uh-huh. fellows, uh-huh. wait a minute while I go get more beer. Gotcha. That ain't me. So I guess, what's Dap drinking? Nothing but a plain old whiskey sour. Nice. Oh, whiskey sour. Here you go. Excellent. Excellent. Better than old fashioned, based on my tasting. No, <laughs> no, you're crazy. Those old fashions were good. They were paint thinner. Uh uh-uh. uh tasty ass, aromatic, flavorful, just really good. I like them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it's a really good thing. We can all tag team on this because we all read it. It's a really good thing when you set your expectations for something low, and the results blow you away okay thank god isn't that great no when thank that... god though because i didn't know which direction you were going on this no oh, isn't that great when that happens where yeah. you're just like yeah i'll keep an eye out for this but you know what i'm not expecting too much out of this mm-hmm. uh case in point i think among the three of us i'm the biggest duck fan <laughs> i think that's indisputable yes that is yes. an understatement of the century yeah. and when i heard marvel got their claws into the ducks and were doing a series of one shots i thought oh boy here we go but the fact that they had corralled a number of very talented italian illustrators to uh produce this thing put a sparkle in my eye and the, but then when I heard Jason Aaron was writing it, I was like, all right, I'm going to hold out hope. We'll wait to see what this thing turns out to be. And I was amazed at the results. 
he not only produced a compelling Uncle Scrooge story, he based it on one of the all-time classic mm -hmm. Karl Barks tales, Christmas on Bear Martin. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was brilliant the way he executed it. Like, let's, nice. let's, and throughout the whole issue, he's letting everyone who knows know that he not only has read the classic stuff, but he's very familiar with the, with the duck mythology. Because there are incidents and characters either alluded to or shown in flashback throughout this thing that makes duck fans know that Aaron's not playing around. He knows his duck mythology. And I thought, wow, I misjudged. I maybe have, um, maybe jumped to a little bit of conclusions along the way. So again, that's on me. I was completely enthralled throughout the issue. It is written by Jason Aaron, and it's called Uncle Scrooge and the Infinity Dime. Mm -hmm. So while it is a Marvel book, there has to be a Marvel connection. I'll allow it. <laughs> um, it is illustrated by Paolo Matura, Francesco DiPolito, and Lucio Di Giuseppe, Alessandro Pastovicio, Vitale Mangiadori. I probably butchered that. And it's uh, Mangiatori. Mangiatori, yes. Uh, Giada Persicinotto with colors by Ariana Consoni. And Joe Caramagna did the art. Yes. Uh, I have only one issue with the presentation, and it's a big one. Oh. I think the coloring is odd. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't start off odd. Okay. But once the magic starts flowing, okay, the pinks and the purples, well, yeah. I, I think, are more of an eyesore than they are an asset. I, I could see that a little, uh, but I, I, I love the art overall, so I'm not going to... Oh, the art's great, yeah. but I don't think on every page the color art complements the pencils or and okay. the inks like the 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 sequence where the beagle boys are walking through the hallway there's a blue tint to everything that green and the red in their shirts and the uh -huh. the, the 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 brown in their shoes there's a blue cast on everything and yeah. I, I know that is a way to um make the uh, colors cohesive, right? It pulls them all together because you have an overall unifying color applied to everything. But it doesn't, it doesn't work for me. The, I, I think more often than not, like 50% of the book, the coloring is on point. The other 50, it's a little, it's a little eye searing to me. Okay. But I'm used to Carl Barks. And I right. also am used to the Italian artists who will take liberties more than the American color or the American duck artist with the color. But I just thought a lot of these pages, the color is just too shocking. It, it's too, the chrome is way too high on some of the stuff. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's just that little nit. I thought this, what'd you guys think about the story? I thought it was great. Really smart. Yeah. I mean, well, I would say, first of all, the, the, the opening uh, letter by Jason Aaron I thought was awesome because yeah. it's heartfelt and honest yeah. and it's I love they put it up front you know so I mean that kind of thing is usually reserved for the back and it's an essay for those that haven't read it it says why I love this duck and he just goes on to really make the case for why this is going to be something that he took seriously that he and and a lot of it had to do with that he um, he read pretty much the vast majority of the Barks and Rosa stuff to his son as he was growing up. And, uh, you know, that hit me right, you know, yep. as, as my kids are about his, his, his son Dash is, I think roughly the same age as Jackson, who's my middle son. So, yeah. So I'm like, man, this is, this is, and it really set the tone, I think for us to, to like, okay, this is, this is coming from a good place. This isn't a money grab. This isn't like, Oh, let's assign big, big writer to do this project. because we have a license. This is him lobbying to do this thing. And, um, and I just, I really, whatever expectations I had going in after reading the opening essay, I thought, oh, this is going to be special. And I think 
Um, you know, I guess to be honest, I didn't notice, I didn't have an issue with the coloring myself, so I just thought it was an absolute grand slam. I, um, I am certainly nowhere near the the duck aficionado that you are, but I do appreciate them, and I've read certainly some of the classic stuff, so I was uh, aware of the homage and that this was basically an Elseworlds tale that start that basically says what if what if the what if the Donald and the nephews don't arrive to Uncle Scrooge's place on that faithful day and he ends up becoming an absolute, you know, total Ebenezer Scrooge instead of Uncle Scrooge where he hates everybody and believes there's nobody that loves him. And I just thought it was very well executed um, from start to finish. And uh, yeah, I loved it. I loved everything about it. Honestly, I just, I thought it was great. And it's so much. So I thought, well, wait a minute. I already declared that the doom issue that Sanford did was going to be in my 11 o'clock or one single issue, one shot of the year. So now what am I going to do with this thing? Right. Like we're like, I don't this know. Is, I don't know what you're going to put. I don't know what I'm going to do. This is what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that doom or this gets the oversized treasury treatment. So then we can use one of them as a favorite reprint. Right. Okay. That's it, nice. I like that. Um, I thought that the story could have been expanded. Because sure. because there's a a point in the narrative thirty pages for the record to be right. There's a point in the narrative where Uncle Scrooge gets pulled through the mirror of worlds, right? And then automatically you have a group of alternate reality Scrooges. Like there could have been an entire maybe two three issues in the middle where he's searching out alternate versions of himself. Easily right? could have been a five issue miniseries. Oh, for Easy. real. Oh. Yeah, it, it's it's way too short. Uh, uh, well, yeah. But don't you think it's, I mean, and again, one of the beauties of this is I think he was by design trying to pay homage right. to the to the short story nature of all the, the duck classics, right? Yeah, but I'm greedy. I, I, I mean, No, I know, but don't you, but as someone who, like, I appreciated, it just was another wink to how much he cares about the history of, of, of Scrooge. Right. And then there's a a nod to Endgame, where the big big battle at the end, a portal opens up. Should we say this or should we let people experience this? Uh, yeah, let them experience it. A portal opens up and a bunch of characters come through. Yeah, and I was like, "That's brilliant! That's amazing!" Like, not only yeah, it, it but it 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 plugs into the conceit of the multiple reality scrooges so if you have multiple reality scrooges chances are you'll have multiple rea- multiple reality other characters as well uh i love the 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 council of gyros i love that concept yes because if anybody more or less is a reed richards in the duck mythology it's gyro gear loose right albeit on a lower intelligence, I would think, but I just thought it was super. Like this, it's pulling Marvel concepts and applying some of them to the Duck characters, mm-hmm. which was really great. Like this thing is just—it's almost flawless, mm-hmm. and that's why I was kicking myself for being such a curmudgeon, thinking, eh, whatever. We'll yeah. see. We'll see what happens. Well, and they give you a reprint of the of the uh, Christmas on Bear Mountain as well. I think that's necessary. Yeah. With the, because the whole premise is that Scrooge tries to manipulate Donald into testing him to see, you know, test his mettle, to see if he's worthy. And he's not, he's not just testing Donald, he's ch- testing all of, quote, humanity as it applies to the characters in this funny animal reality, right? Well, if Donald can show some kind of strength or some kind of fortitude, humanity can't be that bad. Right. Mm -hmm. And in Aaron's version, Donald never gets to the cabin where Scrooge had his um, machination, so to speak, all planned. So the fact that Donald didn't get there, Donald was never tested. Scrooge became the Scrooge that hates everyone and feels like he's he's not loved. And that's where we get this alternate reality bastard who scoured the multiverse for the number one dime. And the number one dime is not... Everybody thinks it's a lucky charm, 
for Scrooge. It's not really a lucky charm. It's it's uh, an example of where he came from. This is my first dime that I ever made. This propelled me into a life of trying to do better and make more. Yes, he's a filthy capitalist, but it, it was the instigating factor that determined the course of his entire life. And the what Aaron did was he he took the materialism out of it and he focused on the human side of it where it's not the dime that matters it's scrooge's determination and and his fortitude and it's just a really great story like it makes me look forward to this mickey mouse wolverine thing like what's <laughs> what's happening i wouldn't i, I wouldn't equate the two myself I, oh I no is, of course not but i'm this just is saying. special because it was a labor of love from the start i uh, i do have a question for you um all of the alternative scrooges um are they versions of scrooge that yes. were in the barks and rosa stories or yes. are they just new yes oh cool that's cool yeah okay. neat great stuff most it's of even them. better than yeah most better. of them are i, I mm. but uh it's it's really cool do you love it that you give me alternate versions of characters, and yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm there. The, the art is absolutely fantastic. Every chapter yep. is beautiful. Uh, everybody compliments one another. Nothing is, uh, you, you, you're not going from Pepe to JRJR. Everything looks fantastic. Uh, but yeah, the, the, uh, the alternate versions, the, 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 the multiverse, the, you, you throw analog characters at, at, at me and, uh, and you have the battles won. But the fact that, uh, it was kind of a perfect storm. You've got Aaron loving the character, um, writing his love letter. And, and it's, it's a story that's based on, something else and it's just everything every, every layer is just is, is another reason to love this issue and uh and yeah and and i i hope um i hope marvel treats it right and and we get uh we 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 get either a nice hardcover or uh or an oversized or just i just go all out for it i, I it's 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 special it's done really really well uh and I think if if you're a Marvel fan, you'll dig it. If you're a Duck fan, you'll love it. It, there's, it, it, it scratches a lot of edges, I think. Agreed. Yeah, it's um, Donald as Wolverine, not Mickey. But, um, yeah, oh, yeah, I I, uh, I usually dislike alternate reality characters. I think it's an easy play to just, well, this is... The Superman from Earth, hundred and two, like you, you're. It's a variation on a theme, which I think is fun, but it's not all that inspired. But this is really cool in that it picks characters we ver- versions of Scrooge we've known from the past, whether by Don Rosa or or Carl Bark. So it's fair game. And, and then you had the the tie in with magic at dispel like she doesn't appear but her right. mi- her mirror of worlds does so that's mm-hmm. great and it's just it's it's phenomenal yeah it's it's stupid good beagle boys right. are are all dopey and and as animated as, as ever it's just wonderful yeah and i'll tell you the the scene where they pull the the money bin up with the plane that's crazy mm-hmm. The way uh, Scrooge is on the chain and you're looking down and you can see the ground and the top of the money bin. And it's just like, oh, my God, these guys are hanging hundreds of feet in the air. Like this, this scene was riveting. It's crazy. Like I'm thinking this would be a perfect animated feature. For sure. Yeah. Great stuff. Way to go, Mr. Aaron. Yeah. um, The versions of the covers, different cover versions were surprising um Al- i mean alex ross did a great job but i thought um that simonson's was pretty spiffy and yeah, it sure was yeah. yeah and even john ramita jr's was really uh, good that's so that's the secret he's, he's got to draw ducks spider-man has a duck 
hey, if the, if he wants to do that, but um, Scotty knocked it out of the park. I thought Scotty's cover was great. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I like I, I like Pepe's. Um, yeah, they're all I I I like I like a lot of them. Yeah, the only one I don't like is, is uh, Frank Miller's. I, can't. I know you guys won't co-sign that because you're afraid of bad karma, but it I is can't. what it is. I can't comment on that. What's he wearing? A goddamn grass skirt? Like I don't understand it. I don't get it. Mc, McNibbins is okay too. It's not like my favorite, but he makes it. He makes yes, yeah, yeah. Like really it's, like it's different. It's different yeah, like monstrous. But the J. Scott Campbell one is very good, but the way he extended the jowl feathers on the left hand side of the beak makes it look like Uncle Scrooge has buck teeth. Interesting. Don't you? Don't oh you, yeah, yeah. I see what you mean. Yeah. yeah, it's it's it's. I think he could have eliminated them underneath the beak, and it would have been fine. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. but that's a great image. I mean, you just take that out, and it's it's it's. But he gets extra credit for drawing a Mona Lisa duck. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, if I had to pick my favorite out of all of them, it would be Scotty's. I think Scotty's cover is great. Interesting. Yep, I like it a lot. It's the first time I've ever seen Scotty draw Uncle Scrooge, and I and I think he nailed it. And not as a baby. And not as a baby. Yeah. Yep. So there you go, Uncle Scrooge and the Infinity Dime. It's a really nice. great book. You should go get it. It warms my heart that you liked it because I saw you read it. I knew how I felt about it. Hadn't talked to Dad about his feelings, but I was so worried that you were going to be like, "Oh, it was poop. I hated it," and it was going to be it. I was like, "I didn't want to grab what they think." But well, like, well, no. I mean, the the two companies are copacetic now. I get it, and it, it would be stupid to leave that kind of money on the table. If Marvel has an opportunity to incorporate the ducks into some kind of one shots or miniseries or or um, Donald as Wolverine, then I can't front on that. Like, if you're gonna make try and make money, make money, but just don't exploit it. Like, I really don't want to see the Duck characters in the 616. Like, that would be an affront. It would it would be, like, the, akin to putting Captain Marvel, a.k.a. Shazam, in the DC Universe. It's dumb. Right. It doesn't work. Right. Well, yeah. at least, I mean, as far as we know, there's no plans for that, at least not. That we've Let's hope. Of. Let's hope. But you keep doing these, these special issues or miniseries where they're just having fun. Uh, what if Donald was Wolverine? Keep doing it. I don't care. Just keep them out of the regular narrative. They don't belong there. Mm-hmm. There's only room for one duck in the Marvel Universe. There you go. Yep. What else do we have? Well, I have to thank that because he received a uh, physical review copy, a free uncorrected proof, not for sale from Abrams of book that he knew would mean a lot to me. So he was kind enough to bring it with him to uh, stately wood manor last week. And that is Cormac McCarthy's the road, a graphic novel adaptation written. Uh, well adapted, I should say by Manu Larson. Um, I mean, you two know this and some of our listeners might know this, but uh, the road is one of my all time favorite books. It is uh, one of my top five favorite American novels ever. Uh, I, I adore it. And I actually think it's one of the books that I fully expected to hate the movie that uh, Viggo Mortensen was the star because I love the book so much. I figured, well, this is going to be an abomination. I actually thought the movie was wonderful as well. Wonderful is not the right word because it's a very, very dark, dark subject matter. But I, I thought it was impeccably well done. So, I I had I when I saw that they were doing a graphic novel adaptation I had uh, high hopes but I was floored at how fucking great this thing is. Oh, it is great. so good. Um and I should mention because it's pertinent here um this doesn't arrive onto our shores until September 17th. So it's a couple months away. It is published by Abrams. Um it might it be in the next previous yeah, it is available um, for you French speakers. The French version is is out, came out a month ago. And I believe the Spanish version is either out or coming out shortly, but the U.S. English version won't be out until September. 
Uh, it's already been in previews. I pre-ordered it. It's already on my oh. favorite list. Okay. Yeah, I think it was maybe last month. But um, some might be wondering who the hell's Manu Larsenet. Well, he is a uh, a French creator. He has done very little of his work, as far as I can tell, has made its way to the U.S. shores yet. But he has been incredibly prolific and well-regarded. He's won multiple uh, high-level European awards at Angoulême. Um, some of his series include The Interworld, Bill Baroud, The Cosmonauts of the Future, Dungeon Parade, uh, Back to the Land, and probably his most famous uh, book is Ordinary Combat, but a very well-respected French uh, writer-artist. And he, in the back of the adaptation, he posts an actual letter that he sent to Cormac McCarthy asking, he said it, it's the, top of the topic of the letter is a plea for the road where Manu says he writes a letter to Cormac basically expressing how much the book means to him and how he would just absolutely adore the opportunity to adapt it into a graphic novel. Obviously Cormac agreed. Um, unfortunately McCarthy passed away before this book saw the light of day, but his estate did uh, continue on and approve it to let it keep going. And I just think it is glorious. Um, now, for those that have not read the book, first of all, shame on you for not reading The Road. But um, or you should read all of Cormac McCarthy, especially The Road and Blood Meridian. But it is a story set in a post-apocalyptic world where the vast majority of humanity is long gone. Um, resources are dreadfully scarce. There's no food, no water. Um, it's incredibly unsafe because most people that are left are cannibals or, or, or doing anything they can to survive. And the story is, is, is very simply a father son story. Um, a father and son are, are trying to meander through this, this, this awful world. And it is the, it is the father's love for his son that keeps him going amidst this near impossible circumstance. And they have just the briefest moments of, safety and joy and happiness and uh in a weird way it's um it's like in a weird way it's like reminiscent to me of a mirror image of kerouac because you know the thing i always loved about kerouac is that he he took the most mundane or simple moments and things whether it be like eating a bowl of rice or you know sitting around talking to friends or listening to music and he just made it so like he just romanticized those small things that we don't normally take for granted. And I think this book does that too, only in a far more angst ridden, anxiety ridden setting, uh, which in a way almost makes the small moments of joy feel even more powerful. Um, I thought the novel, the graphic novel adaptation was incredibly true to the source material. I think it hit on all of the big beats of the, of the novel, the, the key moments. I think it hit on them masterfully and I had never seen um, Manu's work before, but it is just glorious. It is so well done for this. It's it's like many European novels that the, the the figure work is just hyper detailed. There's a moment when the the two protagonists take their shirts off, and you just see them incredibly emaciated because they haven't really they've been starving themselves and been able to eat for for months on end, pretty much save for scraps, and it's just. The, the moments where where um you know where they they have danger it's just you can you can feel the danger it's palpable uh, it reminds me a lot of um, Gerardo Zafino or his Zafino son uh, visually mm. I think they have very they're from the same school for sure like like hyper realistic looking but but clearly illustrated like no photo reference just but just inc just such tight detailed line work that uh, it it just it it almost looks real at times. Um, yeah, just love everything about this, man. I, I can't wait. It makes me just giddy to to get the hardcover when it comes in a few months. And, um, you know, this is a book that the, the novel itself won the Pulitzer. It's, um, you know, as I said, it's one of my favorites of all time. And I just think this is as, as good a graphic novel adaptation as one could ask for the source material. So kudos to Abrams, kudos to Manu, kudos to the McCarthy estate for allowing this to happen and kudos to King Dab for passing this on to me. So uh, everybody just file this away. If you didn't pre-order it, you know, go to cheap graphic novels in September and place your order for Cormac McCarthy's The Road, a graphic novel adaptation by Manu Larsen published through Abrams. Nice. 
I'm glad it hit the mark. I'm, I'm, I was one thing. It's always concerning when someone's going to adapt a novel. Uh, a movie's one thing, but a novel's all in your head. So to know that, uh, but to be concerned about an adaptation alone, but but an adaptation of something like The Road, that means so much to you. That's that 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 had me a little bit on pins and needles. Yeah, I mean, listen, that like I said, I definitely could have could have hated this easily enough. Um, like classic example, the. Uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy movie. I think a lot of people view that as a pretty good movie. I detest everything about it <laughs> because it's just not my Hitchhiker's. But this, this is pretty freaking good, man. It's I, you can tell Manu really loves the source material and loves McCarthy because you guys know. I mean, you've read some McCarthy. Like McCarthy is was I should say was because he's he's gone. I keep forgetting he's passed on. I'm in denial about that. But like, you know, he just he just was the chronicler of the darkness of humanity. That's, that's his thing. He just, he understood and tapped into that vein of, of, of frankly, how awful we can be. And, and uh, my, the reason I think the road stands out among his work is that it's the centerpiece of the book is actually about those rare people in that kind of vein who aren't evil in spite of everyone else around them being justifiably evil because of the circumstances. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, I'll, I'm done. I'm done pitch, pitching the road. It, probably, it stands on its own. Uh, again, I, I think the Pulitzer probably the Pulitzer Prize probably means more as an affirmation than my opinion. But uh, man, oh man, it was this good. That's great. I um, I picked up two uh, two graphic novels. Um, what one's an actual graphic novel? One I think. Is a graphic novel, but it may uh, it may be just a collection from the uh, the limited series. Uh, the first, which um, was good, it just didn't kind of knock me on my butt. Warren Ellis wrote Scars, illustrated by uh, Jason Burroughs, um, put out by Avatar, but. Uh, this is it, it's it's a story that I feel I would definitely watch. I I, I could see being a, an episode of a BBC drama. It, it it just reads very much like that a cop show. Um, so there wasn't it it didn't it didn't hit the ground running. It didn't really kind of just startle me. This is supposed to be Warren wrote this. Uh, over his, I, I believe his his greatest fear, the the most horrific thing he could think of, uh, that that would be the death of his daughter. And this story, um, kicks off when a uh, a thrift shop walks outside. Uh, they're going to close up for the night. The woman walks outside and sees three boxes and uh she asks who we, we never see his face I, I, we never see their face i'm assuming it's her husband uh she's asking if, if he knows what they are and and uh, he says well if there's anything in there bring it in we'll go through it tomorrow if it's trash and just leave it out there for garbage to pick up and she opens up one of the boxes and in the three boxes are the um severed and uh, dismembered, quartered body of an eleven-year-old girl. Jesus. Yeah, and uh, and and Burroughs. It, uh, it, at least this is Burroughs, and not like Rip, who would go to town on something like this. It's still a startling panel, um, but it's not as gory as one might think, especially from an Avatar book, especially from Warren Ellis. But just the way Burroughs draws it, it doesn't. It 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 didn't throw me out of my seat. So, um, the detective John Kane, um, he feels a very, very strong attachment to this case. And, and you find out as, as, as the story continues, um, he, th there's a flashback. I thought he was a father, uh, but it turns out he was never, it, it, his, his daughter was never born because his fiance who was pregnant and he, we're walking out of a shop and basically into a drive-by and the bullet, it, you know, this makes a point to say that the bullet 
went through the mother, the daughter, and John uh, uh, before exiting him and, and leaving him with a scar. So he's got he's got his daughter's blood in his scar. He says, uh, but they do find a suspect, and that's where things go a little. Um, John decides to stop kind of playing it by the book and uh, because he made a promise to Tiffany, the, the 11 year old to, uh, to her parents and, um, and he needs to see it through and um, not sure if it really goes all that well for him at the end, but uh, it was, it's, it's, it's a heavy story. It's, it's a dark story, even the art though, because of, again, the way Burroughs draws in, because it is, a, it, it's a black and white, it's, it's, it's a toned story. Um, it's not necessarily a, a very darkly drawn story. It, it's, it's, it's still kind of, uh, he's got those, those faces where everybody's, face is like wide open and 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 there's no there's no cross hatching there's nothing there's nothing to to muddy up what you're seeing so it's 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 a very clean looking book for such a dark story um but i was able to get it, well not i was able to but it, it's a pretty quick read uh for a trade but um the thing that i was really um pleased with although I'm not sure if, if, if I'm in love with the ending of it, is Love Addict, uh, Confessions of a Serial Dater by uh, by Corn Shadme, who, who Jason and I have discussed before. Uh, this is actually from Top Shelf uh, from 2016, I believe. And it's a story... It, it I don't know if it's autobiographical to uh, to some degree, uh, but the, the, the main... The lead of the story is, is uh, someone who goes by K, and um, he uh, he's never been really lucky uh, with love or with relationships, or especially sex. And he um, he and his roommate are basically having a stoop sale, just uh, whatever they want to get rid of in their apartment. And uh, this uh, young blonde lady buys the chair. That uh, the K had the K that was in there in the apartment when they moved in. Uh, so he sells it to her. Um, basically, we see that uh, one year later they've been dating, they, they've been vacationing, then and now they're moving in together. And she um, she wants to bring the chair, and he's like, God, no, I did. It, it, it's ugly. I was selling it. Blah blah blah. He ends up having to keep it. Six months later, they break up, and he uh, he moves back in with his uh, former roommate and then his roommate tells him to sign on to uh, the online dating app Lovebug and um, and he does and after a couple of false starts because of he's learning how to play this game uh, he uh, he kind of starts coming a little bit more arrogant uh, feels that he uh, is a master of of this world now and, and, and knows how to play the game after, uh, after a handful of months. Um, and you, you, you see the personality change. You see the, the type of, it's not even now, now it's not even dates. He just, he, he's just trying to see how quickly he can get them into bed. And, um, that goes well. Sometimes it gets, uh, little crazy other times, but he's kind of run the gamut now as far as the types of women, the types of sex, uh, the types of uh, stories he's telling them as uh, he leaves one date and goes to another. And uh, he, we do see him kind of get sick with this life and, and, and wants to be with someone big, have a monogamous relationship. And it, uh, he, grass is always greener and, and something clicks and he kind of just tries to screw that up as well. And, and as, as we near the end of the story, um, we, uh, we, we see how he's turned his life around for the better or, or, or we hope, and it's, it, it's, it's not necessarily left open-ended or, or, or guessing. You kind of think you kind of feel, you know, which way K is leaning, but it's, it's there to be open to interpretation. Um, 
art's great. I I I like Shadmi a lot. So uh, this is this is slightly more of the more cartoony than uh, some of the other stories he's he's drawn. But uh, yeah, I I thought it was a uh, well, it, it, yeah, it was it, it was the first table Vince and I went to at Heroes Friday morning when we get in. Um, went through uh, my man's discount trade boxes and uh pulled this out pulled a couple other things out but um this was a nice find it was it was a good get i um i would definitely recommend it if if you've read corn's other works but uh but even the story it's he doesn't really i did there's no penetration but you get nudity of of all sorts and all shapes and sizes um but yeah i i uh I like it quite a bit, so yeah. Hopefully you will too. I have a Heroes-related story. Do you? Oh. Yeah. Um, Dap and I went over to talk up Michael Dooney, who we always... Shout out. Hit. Shout out. Yeah, we, 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 always, shout we always hit up Michael whenever we uh, are at Heroes because of our history, and I love his work, and all of that. And he sitting... To this show. He does. And sitting next to Michael was Gavin Smith. Yes. Who we talked to at length. Oh, and yes. Gavin was one of the artists uh, for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Alpha issue. And um, at the very least, I was dismissive of his work on that issue. The the Monster Island story, um, narratively, I thought was a whiff because it had absolutely nothing to do with the Turtles, uh, aside from Jenica. And uh, if this book, if, if Alpha was supposed to be a tease to, to propel you to read Jason Aaron's new series, or forthcoming series, and the eventual spinoff series... Uh, like um, Monster Island teased, I thought I didn't think it was a good issue, but I had a problem with the art in the Monster Island segment, uh, which was colored by Rhonda Pattinson. Pattinson, and so we're looking through um, Gavin's portfolio, and he had pages from his Monster Island story, and. I will tell you, the art that we saw in Alpha bears very little resemblance to the art that is on those finished pages, his black and white art. I don't know what, I can't deduce exactly what the problem is with the coloring, but I do not think Pattison did him a, a service with, the, with this color. If you look at the pages and it's like, hold, there's so much detail that you can't see in these finished pages. Mm -hmm. And I was gobsmacked. I really was. So, um, wouldn't you know it, Mr. Smith has a story in the recently published Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Black, White, and Green. Is this the first story he's ever read? I'm not sure. Not okay. entirely sure. Okay. But uh, the conceit with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles black, white, and green is like the Deadpool black, white, and red. The stories are basically in black and white with a spot color that's in the title. In this case, green. And I think his art here is, is really fabulous. So maybe it, he colored it himself. So it may have been a case of um, just a bad match uh, uh, not a great uh, pairing between uh, penciler inker and colorist on that alpha issue so Mr. Smith I apologize because your pages are way freaking better than what we saw in the finished project so, and so, I didn't know that the, some of those other pages we were looking at were for this uh, black white and green story yeah um, I don't think it's on your list but uh, Dap, you didn't read Last Ronin 2, number 2, did you? No, not yet. I haven't, I haven't read it yet. Mm. Broken Clock Syndrome. 
for me. Mm. Yep. I'll have her for next week. Yeah. Um, Eastman and Walt, I think, are a really good match because the dialogue in this thing is totally natural, totally believable. None of it sounds, uh, at least in your mind's ear, none of it sounds forced. Um, there's an extended dialogue between April and someone else that is just 100% completely believable. It sounds like two very intelligent people having a, an important conversation. And I just think it, th- this is a great sequel to an already great um, miniseries, landmark miniseries, really. So, uh, yeah, if you're not on the last Ronin 2 uh, train, I suggest you get there because this is the future of the Turtles. This is going to stick. This is not a what if or a, uh, a reimagining. This is the future of our boys. So you got to get it. And it's very, this, very, what does it, does it feel like, or does it get give you the impression that, uh, it's an out in case Aaron's run doesn't work out. No, I really don't think they care. Okay. I don't think Eastman cares all that much about what Aaron's done doing. I mean, I'm sure on some level he does, but as far as his own projects, I don't think he gives a shit. He's right. just there. This is this is what they're doing. This is the uh, uh, the future of the the turtles, and I think it's really smart. It's really well done. They're obviously, I mean, these four characters obviously aren't our turtles. They they're reminiscent in the boys in in some of the mannerisms, but uh no. Um this is a totally different beast and I love it. There's hooks and there's there's anchors, right? April's still around, so that's the anchor. Uh mm-hmm. Casey Marie is the the daughter of Casey Jones and April, so there's another anchor. So you have familiarities in it, but as far as the narrative, it's totally new. It's like this is what happens after Mikey. Um, I don't want to spoil Last Ronin in case anybody hasn't read it. Read it, but uh, this is Mikey. Mikey's um, contribution has led to this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's great. Really good. I'm surprisingly good. But anyway, so there you go. Yeah, Let's check the wall. Oh, look at that. We're almost out of time. What does that mean? That means that we have to tell you to remember to save money. We shouldn't have to tell you that, but we're going to. Because if you save money on comics and collected editions, you can buy more collected editions and hardcovers. You can jump from the paltry little trade paperbacks and get the hardcover versions because you're saving money. Where? CheapGraphicNovels.com. CheapGraphicNovels.com. OGNs, omnibus editions, trade paperbacks, manga, all that stuff at a mere fraction of that price printed on the back. You'll giggle when you see the price because you know you're not going to pay that. And please check out our Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash 11 o'clock comics. Recently retooled. Whole lot of fun. We would love it if you joined us. Join the family. In your travels. I don't know what I'm going to talk about here. Oh, I will echo what Jason said about Destro number one. Nice. This is the flip side of us going in, where I'm the odd man out in terms of love for a a certain property. I think of the three of us, I'm the least infatuated with G.I. Joe. That's kind of fair. Sure. Has Dap, have you watched the cartoon? Oh, back in the day when it was coming out, yeah. All right, then I'm the least because I've only seen maybe two episodes. Crazy. Sorry, but I thought this issue was freaking phenomenal. I thought Andre yes, Br- Andre Brisson kicked ass on the art. Mm-hmm. The sequence where the bats come dropping out of the sky, like that's friggin' incredible. Mm-hmm. And I really like the fact that Destro's kind of subservient to Cobra Commander, but he's just like, fuck this clown. <laughs> It's like, I, I have a plan. I'm going to go risk my life to talk to a bunch of ghosts that may or may not be talking to me, but I'm going to do it. Like, he defers to his ancestors. That's crazy. These people are dead. What is he hearing? What I, is, look at, I mean, if you look at that, that uh, panel where he's perched atop that rock and you're looking down into that, that is a 
steep, steep drop. Mm. And he's just like, give me some guidance, my man, please. And like he's like, all right then. <laughs> and he leaves. <laughs> he's either clinically insane or he's hearing <laughs> something that I can't see. And the Tamat and, and Zamat and... Tomax. 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 Tom, yeah, Tomax. I love the fact that they part their hair on opposite sides. Oh yeah, yeah. that was that was always the they're, they're mirror images. Yeah, but that was a thing in the cartoon too. Yes. Ah, it's crazy. And if you look yeah. at that one panel, one of them's got his arm under his right his his hand uh, under his right arm, and the other one has his hand under his left arm. And it's mm-hmm. stupid, but it's so much fun. Like I I I love this issue a lot. A lot of violence, a lot of cutthroatness going on. Some sexy time, a little bit of sexy time. I just thought it was great, but I love Andre Brisson. I think he's just yes, wonderful. sir. Yeah, and I don't want to slight the contribution from um, Dan Waters. I thought the story was great. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like I know Destro yet as well as like you know him, but this gave me a lot of insight into what makes this character tick. Yeah, like, like you said, said, he's he's a capitalist. Yeah, but like the, I think it's the best, the best, the text material was the best explanation of someone understanding Destro that I've ever seen. Right. And I, I, it was really funny where Cobra Commander's like, hey, those those bats that you got cooking, how they doing? Destro's like, oh, they're great. They just shoot at everybody. <laughs> they, they, they don't know. <laughs> they don't know friendly from foe. And I was like, oh, well, that could be a problem. <laughs> really good stuff. Yeah. Nice. Can you explain to me how Destro... So is it a mask or is his skin actually chrome? Yeah, it's a mask. But how does he smile and shit? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that's... Yeah. It's, how it's does Vance Astro? Or Scorpion. I, if you notice, the, the people he's talking to are his ancestors and they also had masks. Oh, I got that part, yeah. But, I mean, there were they were traditional masks. Destro looks like he's got... Chrome yeah, actually like, sprayed like onto high tech. Yeah, it's like a yeah, it's like a high tech metallic mask. It is. So it's unstable molecules. Yeah, it's almost like almost like a almost like a skin, like an exoskeleton. Okay, type of thing. that's good. And it doesn't what, make any sense because it's like how does he breathe? No, it stuff, doesn't. But, but, yes, but I thought it was cute that one of the insurgents had a makeshift Destro mask. Yes, in that one scene, it's really fun. And, well, and it's again, a, and, and I mean, talk about a deep cut. They, I mean. Dark dark lines in this issue, which is like right. That's, yeah, that's I'm guessing that that's a character we don't we haven't seen much of recently. No, I mean he had, he was in the old the old comics, but he he's he is. De- I mean, just as it says in this, he's Destro's cousin, and he runs he runs that country. He's a he's a despot, right? And Destro's just a glorified gun runner, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. No, I, I thought this was this I'm was great, extraordinary. Great. Yeah, I, the visuals couldn't have been any better for me. I, yeah, really, really sharp stuff. Destro. It was uh, fortunately for us. It was uh, it was early issue Dark World, uh, Dark Ride. Early issue Dark Ride Bresson, not not late issue. Well, also with the late issues, you probably do. I mean, maybe stop giving it so much love since yeah. you know, it was done. Yeah, I'm telling you, they, I think the entire creative team just just were exasperated midway through mm-hmm. that and they're just like fuck we're not pulling the numbers we thought we were yeah yeah probably true i mean it, come on th- these people have to make money come on son yeah but i'm sure the return on destro was far greater than dark ride Facts. yeah oh and and adriano lucas i can't s- slight him that's a, this is a great team so there you go give me more of this much more mm-hmm that's you um, in your travels, I'll, you know what, I'll, I mean, that was, that was the last thing on my list as well, um, was, was Destro number one. So I'll just echo what Vince said. Um, it, 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 it did look great. It'll be a little bit of a, um, uh, I'm not going to call her a love interest because I don't, I don't, I don't know where Distro is thinking these days. But um, I just thought the first, first, it was probably. I mean, as far as what what went on from cover to cover, it may be my favorite of the 
for Joe favorite first issue of, of, of the four series we got so far. Um, Duke was good. It was just, it was, it was a little born identity ish in, in ramping up to things. Uh, the, Completely um, agree. Yeah. and, and Scarlet, I, I enjoyed Scarlet, but it, it, it was a similar situation. Uh, this one, I mean, they just came down guns blazing, uh, from the start. And I do like the attitude Destro gives Cobra commander and, and, and their, uh, and their back and forths. But, um, but I, I growing up or even thinking about it, recently with gi joe it was always a good versus evil these are the army guys these are the terrorists and but to to get um something like similar to with with zartan but but to get death throws something's focusing on him specifically and showing what he brings to the table um i i i like that extra that that that, that addition to the uh the legend so yeah yeah, but the, the fact that Destro is actually doing good work in this first issue, he just so happens to be on the side of good. He's profiting from it. Well, I mean, oh, taking out the one dictator to yeah. put another one in? Yeah. yeah. No, and that's, and, right. Yes, it's it's still, he's still somebody you would, you'd root for doing that move. It's it's not. I mean, right, it's, right. And, and Jason, is this Carlton Ritz lady important? Like, have we seen her before? No, but it's a clever name, right? Yes. Sure. I mean, she's cute, but I thought maybe she was pulled from G.I. Joe mythology somewhere. Well, if she is, I don't... I mean, there's there's a hundred plus issues... Well, there's probably 200 issues of Joe I haven't read between the... Gotcha. The late stage IDW and the Devil's Doing stuff, but so I, I can't say for sure she hasn't been around before, but... Nothing of import from like. I don't know. I, I don't know if Larry would 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 pull a name like that. So, I, right? I'm, I'm, yeah, exactly. She's, so. she, she's an original creation for this. Yeah. Yep. All right. Um, well, in your travels, I have a manga. So talk about turning things on its head. Vince talks GI Joe, and and I talk manga. Go figure. Uh, what's next, locusts? Um, but uh, wow. in your travels, check out Secondhand Love which is by Yamada Murasaki. It is the, uh, the follow-up, at least in terms of what we get here in English, to Talk to My Back, which uh, was my favorite manga of three years ago and on the 11 o'clock Oscars. And it's translated by guess who, Vince? Uh, Ryan... Um, yes. Yes. Uh, Ryan, Ryan Holmberg. Holmberg, yes. yes. Sorry, I was... Translates all the manga. <laughs> doing something else. Sorry. Yes, doing all the manga. Um, glad to know you're listening to me. Cool. Um, <laughs> it's great. Um, Judging by the first volume, it's not something I would want to read anyway. <laughs> it's true. It's a, it's, a, it's a story about strong women. Jesus. Um, this is a two-story uh, adaptation. It's, it's actually weirdly packaged because it's um, two stories... Uh, a Blue Flame, which is about 150 pages, and then Secondhand Love, which is the, the title of the, of the whole thing, which is about 48 pages. I found it interesting that they they named the book after the shorter of the two stories. But then I did some digging. As it turns out, uh, the story Blue Flame was originally in Japanese, translated into A Shimmering Pale Color, which was the name of the collection in Japan. So I guess they figured with the brand U.S. they'd give the other story top billing. So... Make of that what you will, but it is um, it to the only through line which is much of Yamada's work from. Uh, and to be clear, she was not, she's not a modern manga creator. She was uh, did most of her work in the late seventies and early eighties. She was making feminist manga at a time when there was almost no female point of view manga. Uh, first story is about Emmy. She is a, a, a beautiful young woman. She's having a an affair with a married man knowingly, um, and it starts off where she's totally fine with it. And it's uh, almost slice of lifey at the beginning, but uh, but she begins to sort of realize that it's a pretty self destructive and 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 disrespectful to continue going through the motions, and she uh, ends up finding her way out of that situation. And then the second story is about a woman who uh, laments her chronically unfaithful father and how it impacts her own ability to be intimate in relationships. So really beautiful stuff, and. Um, you know, I would just say that if you're interested in a uh, you know a feminine point of view from manga, which we don't get that often, uh, this is just about as good as it gets. So check it out, Secondhand Love by Yamada Murasaki. Nice. There you go. 
I know you'll be picking it up any day now. When we go to when we go to when we go to book off next time, you'll be sure yeah, to pick it up. yeah, <laughs> zero chance. But uh, I appreciate the fact that you enjoyed it. Mm. What's that? Mm. What does that mean? <laughs> there, th- we have thousands of things we have to read. Why would I re- want to read this <laughs> just because? Let's surprise re- yourself. Uh, maybe, maybe, but I, I'm not a gambler. There was a time when you, when you saw that Tilly Walden, and now look. I, I do like Tilly Walden. Walden. Why? All of a sudden, because I don't want to read this strong female character done by a woman. I don't want to read Tilly Walden. How does the, no where, no I'm saying you there was a time when you thought when you saw that Tilly Walden and now you appreciate her I saying. never side eyed Tilly's art okay but you you didn't the, think you'd be the, some stories some of the themes yeah would be just like lukewarm with me like okay great explore your burgeoning sexuality I I, I like that I guess it makes people happy. <sighs> Hey, everybody. Thanks for being here with us one more time around. We hope you come back next time. In the meantime, go buy some comics. What? Buy everything. Buy all the comics and read them and talk about them. Make friends over them and then come back here and listen to us talk about more comics and then come to the Slack and all that stuff. Um, just, you know the drill. Say goodnight. Should I do it again? Why not? Why not? Say good night. <clears throat> Say good night. Come on, you piece of shit. Oh my god. Refresh the page to hear the sounds. What? Yikes. Please refresh the page to hear the sounds. That's oh my rough. god. That I don't. The page to hear the sounds. The page to hear the sounds. <laughs> this is fucking stupid. How do you refresh the page? <laughs> All right, here we go. I got this. It's not working. I hear my ancestors crying. David. Oh my god. <laughs> Hello, niece and nephew. It's Uncle Roger. Hi, Roger. Hiya! Oh, I'm so proud of myself. What is that? Oh, I know. <laughs> vegetable tastes like set anyway. Don't eat vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> so weak. So weak. <laughs> Good. My wife came into right. the, the TV Thanks. and she's like, Why are you watching a cooking show? I'm like, oh, shit. I'm like, it is a cooking show, but it's not really a cooking show. It's a brilliant comedian. And she's Remember, like, use the right amount, not the white amount. That's right. The white amount. And she's like, okay. Uh, Mia, Mia doesn't think he's funny. And I said, you have lost your damn mind. Mm. Yes. Oh, she'd be cray. Yes. You know, he was canceled by China like yeah, four China. times. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. It's yeah. crazy. All right, everybody. Hey, check out Uncle Roger and come back and listen to us next week because we love you so much. You're the MSG of comic collectors. Bye. Yo. <laughs> Yo. That's it for that one. We are descending a stairwell with Justin Jordan. Shut up. This is money. We just we just finished speaking with Andrew Peepoy.
Western this, this weekend? Yeah, it's all over the place. Yeah. yeah, so this is not how. This open next week is a little bit. Oh, we're, oh, we're cooking with cats. Dude, we still got five floors. What? Yes, we did. Well, considering we started at 16. It's easy piece of little squeeze. Hey, at least it's down. Yes. Oh, yeah, I don't know if we're going to. Yes. I will sleep with the five yeah, streets. Absolutely. This is where I'm going to do. I'm going to see a number for a while. I'm guessing you can't get off of three, two. It's going to be getting smaller and shorter. Yes. That's what she said. We're getting compressed. I know. I feel like the goblin is going to come get us. Oh, that was a lot more forward than the two. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is when they lie to you. Even the doors are closer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, See, that's two. This one's taking longer for the new one. What happens if we go this way? Dude, did you hear where the header said? Can't talk about why the Simpsons come yeah, to say. Yeah, take us to the, should we just go down one more? Can we get on to down one more? I wonder why he can't talk about it. What's that? Maybe. Andrew Peepoy said he could not talk about why there's... You are pretty much a stranger to him. So yeah. 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 yeah, I'm not a stranger. I bought every one of his freaking oh, books. Oh, there you go. He knows you met him in his place. Yeah. So, I mean, it could be NDA. Yeah, I've given him more money than friggin' anybody. It could be NDA. We made it, boys. Thank you very much. Was it a cancer or a bone? That was Justin Jordan. <laughs> oh, Christ. And we're out. And we're out oh, of the L. Oh, God. Oh, wait, we got this. This is where. Jesus Christ. Where's he going? Where's he going? Who's that? Why are you laughing? Hey, it's Justin Jordan. That's a good writer. I think we're done with that.